Hey there, welcome back to the channel. If you're using something like a Raspberry Pi, which runs on 5 volts here from USB, but you need to control something like this pump that runs on 12 volts, it's not 100% straightforward. Let's go take a look at how we can turn this action into this behavior. Let's get started. If you've been following along, I'm going to turn the lowly Raspberry Pi Zero into an automated watering can for house plants. I've already done a video on how to get the level of the water in our reservoir, but next we need to get water out of the reservoir. For that, I'm going to try to use this pump. This pump may or may not be what I actually use. It's pretty small. I have to see if it can deliver water to the height that I need, but the principles for driving this or a larger pump really are going to be the same. Now, the first thing I want to do is I don't want to use the Raspberry Pi directly. These pins are a pain in the ass to get to. So I'm going to use a Yoshi Pi. So we've got the Raspberry Pi Zero here. We've got a display with a touch screen and some other convenience things on here. Uh, one notable convenience underneath the display is a set of relays. In order to switch a higher voltage than what your system is running, you're going to need a relay. Relays come in a large variety of sizes, shapes, and capacities. On this device itself, we have a pair of relays. That's this integrated circuit right here, and this is actually two relays. You can step up from something like this to this relay. This one can control a larger current than this. We can step up from that. Here's a standard automotive one. This will take several amps. And we can even step up from that to more industrial size relays. This can do higher voltages. So let's take a look at how relays work just in general and the things you need to know about the relays that you're selecting. When you look at a relay, especially if you look at a schematic, I've seen, you know, a pretty fair number of symbols, but typically they will look like one of two things. They'll usually have a box around them, but not always. Then inside, you'll have something like this, which is the coil. And then you'll have something that is, you know, a switch that is our contact. The other one that you might see is it looks like an inductor inside there. And then they have that. In both cases, though, this is the coil here. And this is our contact. The coil is the thing that we drive from uh, our code, so we're going to turn it on and off, and that switches the contacts. So when we're looking at one of these relays, we need to generally know a couple of things. First, for the coil, we want to know what the operating voltage is. So this is what is the voltage that we need to provide to switch it. There's also a, typically a current that is required to switch. And what you do there is you actually look at what the resistance is and then use Ohm's law to figure out how much current the, you know, your operating coil voltage is uh, in order to switch it. Basically, you just want to take a look at this resistance and make sure that you don't have to add something else so that uh, your source going through the coil doesn't burn it out. On the Yoshi Pi, we've got this dual channel here. You don't need to worry about that resistance because it's actually already taken care of here. So when we, in our code, say relay uh, A or relay B on or off, we don't have to worry about any of that. It's already handled for us. The voltage is appropriately sized for the output of the Raspberry Pi, and the resistance is already handled. So we don't need to worry about that. What we need to worry about is the amount of current flowing through the contacts, so the contacts here on this relay. So the first thing we want to do is take a look and see what this is capable of. If I switch over here, we take a look. This is the ASSR 1228, and this data sheet has, you know, he, here you can see the diagram. It's a little bit more complex because it's an optical 
relay. It is not a mechanical. And we've got a bunch of part numbers, but really the important parts here are that it can uh, run up to 60 volts through that contact. We're running um, 12. Here, you can see it'll either do 0.2 or 0.4 amps. If you go look at these schematics for the 1219, what it boils down to is each one of the channels on this can do 0.2 or 200 milliamps. So the first thing we have to do is go look to make sure that that 200 milliamps is not exceeded when we drive the pump. And if I look at the pump, this is really the only information we have. It says on it that it's one to three watts and it says 5.5 .5 to 12 volts. So I don't know at which voltage it's drawing what wattage. So rather than trying to figure this out and come up with a theoretical one, the easiest thing to do is to just measure it. So we'll drop this in some water, hook this up to the power supply that tells us what the uh, current is uh, being sourced, and we'll see how much power this draws. I have the pump wired to the right side of this bench power supply. You can see it's set at 12 volts. If I turn on the pump, you can see it's drawing somewhere around 280 to 290 milliamps, which exceeds that contact maximum on the onboard relay. So if we can't use this relay to directly drive this pump, what are our options? Well, we could attach another relay and use a GPIO here. The challenge there is most relays won't activate uh, their coil on 3.3 volt, at least not ones that have high amperage contacts. So what we're going to do is we can actually chain together relays. We'll use this relay to drive another relay. This relay, the contacts, looks like they can handle somewhere around, depends on the voltage, but around 10 to 12 amps, which is way more than we need for this pump. It actually would allow me to use a larger pump if I end up needing one. The coil on this is a 12 volt coil, and we know that this pump also takes 12 volts. So we can drive this relay, the same voltage that we're sourcing for this pump, and this relay can switch uh, easily this much. The question here is uh, the amount of current to drive this coil. Is it less than 200 milliamps, which is what the maximum of this is? I've already looked at the specifications on this, but we can pull them up and take a look and see what it requires. This is the relay here. You can see that it can switch 10 amps of current at 30 volts DC, so it absolutely will meet our needs there. And if we look at the coil, they make them in 6, 12, 18, 24. This is a 12 volt coil, but you can see, as I said, this one only goes down to 6 volts, and we only have 3.3, so we could not drive this directly. But you can see that the coil itself requires a maximum of 1,000 milliwatts, so a watt basically maximum. So this is easily within the range of that 200 milliamps that we have. So this is a good candidate for uh, what we want to do. So as I said, we're going to use the relay that is on board. So we'll draw this relay. And this one is driven by the relay signal from our application. And where this goes, we know that it actually goes through a resistor into ground on the board here. The contact, this is the interesting part here. What we're going to do is we know we need to switch the coil on this. So we'll come over and come through the coil on the other relay. And we know that this is a 12 volt coil. So it's going to require 
12 volts of input, and then we can just connect this to ground. So what happens now, and we'll separate these relays here, and we'll draw in the other relay. So now we've got 12 volts that when we signal this, it will close this contact. So now we can actually just take this and connect it right there as well to 12 volts and run this out to the pump. This will send 12 volts to the pump. And then after it goes through the pump, it'll come to ground. So we're going to use this relay here to drive an, the coil on another relay here, and that will gate this 12 volt through the contactor up to the pump. Here's what that looks like. I have this voltage converter here. Again, this is overkill and it allows a adjustment, but we're coming in here with 12. I just have a pigtail right now that allows me to connect it up. It comes through this converter and then it comes out with five volts. That way I can use this to drive the entire Raspberry Pi. On the underside, the grounds are connected to one another and we've got the power coming to this relay. So we have the 12 volts coming to both sides of this relay. Again, the five volt is just to allow me to drive the Raspberry Pi. But in this case right now, it's just a 12 volt driving this relay. But we can simulate that happening by just driving this to ground. So if I take this and I connect it to ground, what's going to happen is that will energize this relay and close this contact and drive the pump. So I can actually test everything with just this without this relay yet, because all I'm doing is contacting this signal to ground. So if I take this and drive it to ground, it should activate all of this and turn on the pump. So let's go over to the power supply and just test that out before we wire everything up to the Yoshi Pi. All right, I've got it all wired up. I've got power coming in here from that power supply. So it's just a USB pigtail that comes from the 12 volt side of that. Then that signal wire comes in to the relay and then out of the relay just to ground. So that's all we're doing is driving it to ground. When I click this water now button, let's go take a look at the code real quick. This isn't intended to be a code walkthrough, but we'll take a look anyway. You can see when that button is clicked, the call for pumping event fires. Call for pumping just tells the pump service to run all of the pumps. I've set it up so that I can have multiple pumps in case I want to. And then the pump service, when we run all pumps, all it does is it closes the relay, waits for five seconds, then opens the relay. So if we go back to the application, if I click this, I'm not sure if you can hear it, but the pump did run and it shut off. So that's all there is to it. Thanks for watching.